Here's an example of a sales campaign that I ran on Twitter. I'm in the ad group right now. We're going to go down to the goal as web conversions for the conversion event, create new. And I went with the most basic version, which is page view. I changed the post view attribution to off because if I'm running ads on Twitter, on Facebook, etc., cetera, uh, I'm just being very conservative and saying that only if they engage with the Twitter ad are they actually attribute it to the Twitter ad uh, instead of a situation like this where you're, uh, you may have interactions between Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. You might name this something like, thank you page for product A and hit next. Hit define event with URL rules, hit next. And you can choose here, you could say like URL contains something like thank you, but I'm just gonna put in the exact URL. So this is the exact URL for the checkout or the, the thank you page, the confirmation page after they make a purchase, hit save. And then what you wanna do is hit view Twitter pixel and then you'll hit control A. And if you're on Mac, I'm not sure what it would be, but copy this. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna paste it into your website or landing page. So here I am in the head code with HTML and JavaScript, and I'm just gonna paste the Twitter code in here and hit save. So basically what we did was we created an event of bringing people to the thank you page for a product purchase. Now to manage that, we can go to tools up here and into events manager. And then what we're gonna see is all the events listed down here. So you can see I have uh, maybe something like 10 different events. Uh, this particular one is active. We have a few that are inactive, some that have no recent activity. And from here, we can also delete certain events. So. Uh, for example, thank you page for product A. Let's say we got rid of product A. Well, I can say delete event. There are three different status types for website conversion events. So there's active, where activity has been detected within the last 24 hours. Inactive, activity has not been detected, and no recent activity. Activity has not been detected within the last 24 hours. Now, when you first create the event, it's probably going to show up in red with inactive. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that to active. To make the event active, all that I did was I pasted the URL for the thank you page into my own browser. And then what that does is it sends the signal, hey, somebody went to this page. It sends that signal back to the Twitter ad manager. So you can see that the status of this changed to active. That's how I'm able to, to test if it's working or not. The other thing that I can do is I can edit the event. So hit the three dots, go to edit event. Can change the attribution settings if we want to say two weeks instead of 30 days. Hit next. This you cannot change after the fact. So we're gonna leave that. Uh, but we could add in say new conditions. If they go to another different thank you page or perhaps they buy uh, a downsell product. So maybe they don't buy a $2,000 product, but they decide to buy your $50 ebook or something like that. You could add these conditions as well. The only real change I want to do here is change the name because thank you page is not clear enough if I have 30 different products. So I said, thank you page SAS, hit next, next, save. To learn more about the different ways to work with pixels and conversion tracking, check out this article, Conversion Tracking for Websites from the X Business website. If you run into any problems with Twitter, you can just go to this help section. It's actually really effective to get an immediate live chat going with somebody from Twitter and they'll be able to answer any specific challenges that you run into. It's not as developed as the Facebook ad manager, so you're probably more likely to get some quality support at this stage. A couple of issues you may run into. The first is just not pasting the pixel for Twitter into the correct part of your web page. so make sure you consult with your web developer for that. The other thing is not selecting the correct type of event type. And um, 
Twitter really should be more flexible with this, but they aren't. So you can see here, I have a whole bunch of events, but because these events are labeled as page views, they're not actually gonna show up as an option when you run a sales or conversion campaign in Twitter. That's why what you need to set up is going to be something like a purchase. So you can see that that's what I did uh, with this particular event. I called it SaaS Purchase B. And there's really no difference between these whatsoever, except the selection of the type. And I'll show you what that looks like. <clears throat> so if you go to tools into the events manager, you'll be brought to this section. You can say add event, this button on the right. You can call this say purchase product X. And this is where there's actually a, a serious implication in terms of what type of uh, campaigns you can run. So you want to go with something like purchase for a sales campaign. So then when you're in the ad group, which I am here for a sales campaign, and you go down to conversion event, it'll actually be listed here. You can see that I have two, only two listed, even though I have, have a whole bunch of events. So I'm gonna choose this option, this active event. I'm gonna pay by a link click in this case, because I'm focused on sales, not generating awareness. I'm not gonna go with accelerated. I'll go with standard. I'll keep all the placements. I'm gonna change the age range to 21 to 49. I'm gonna only target people that speak English. I'm gonna leave the location as the United States. We probably could go broader than this, but we're not going to. Uh, for the placements, let's just choose all of them here. Less, I'm less concerned about this because it's a sales campaign. Now the audience targeting is really what's gonna be important here. So we are interested in this case, in selling to people that know about SaaS. So let's see what SaaS options we have here. So we only have a global audience of 260 people. This is a case where we're really running into a limitation with Twitter because it doesn't have the same reach that you're able to achieve with something like Facebook. Also, because of business to business targeting, it's not going to be as sophisticated as what's capable in LinkedIn. So this is one of the cases where I'm not going to go with keyword targeting because it's just, it's too small, right? 260 people is just not enough. So what we're going to do here is instead go to interests and we're going to type in software and we're going to target business software and technology and computing enterprise software. So now we're able to reach a significant number of people and we're gonna have the demographic restrictions to try to make sure we're not hitting irrelevant people. Now, since I'm running a sales campaign, optimized targeting, I'm, I'm gonna leave that on in this case because I, I trust the AI more when it has concrete results to get like sales, I don't really trust it when it's trying to do something like raise brand awareness because it's just gonna shove me into the cheapest inventory possible. Here is where we're gonna create the ad itself. I'm going to add media and I'm going to upload a video. The video I'm gonna upload is this one here. You can see it has a title at the top and captions at the bottom. What I did was I imported this recording into subtitle and then subtitle automatically generated the captions and allowed me to create the title. For the copy of the ad, I'm just gonna copy what I have on Facebook and then truncate it based on the text limitations in Twitter. You can see here that I'm over by 4,000 plus characters, so it's substantially less than you can do on Facebook. So here we are with the copywriting significantly reduced. Sometimes you're going to run into issues uploading a video where it's just not gonna load. So to overcome that, what you do is you click this link to go to the media library and then upload the media directly from here. And then it's going to load more reliably than doing it from within here. Note that it should have a URL destination and a headline at the bottom, but you cannot add that until the video or image has been added. Once the video has been processed and uploaded here, you can click it and you'll be able to change the thumbnail. So for example, if you created something in Canva for YouTube for this video, you could use that same one 
uh, for your Twitter ad. Now that it's been added to the media library, I can select it here and confirm. And now I'm given the option of a headline. So I might call this uh, get more SaaS customers guaranteed. And then I'll have the URL for my landing page. We'll put the URL in there, hit next. Okay, so here we are with the SaaS purchases campaign, daily budget of $15, total budget of $100. That's a bit low, but we're just playing around here. Uh, pay by link click so we can review all of this. The targeting is actually much, much broader uh, than we were initially able to achieve with the keyword targeting. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and explore that. And the demographic restrictions seem pretty reasonable. So I don't see any reason to narrow that any further. Uh, the platforms seem fine. So it's really this, this targeting that probably needs to be narrowed. So let's, let's re-explore that. So we can see that the interest targeting is actually a bit large. Now, if I put in something like, say, marketing, 6.4 million people. The audience is just a bit too broad for what I want. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to conversation topics. And we can see that it's actually conversations having a look back window of 28 days. So it's pretty recent interest in that conversation topic. So this is the targeting I'm going to go with, and I'm going to try lifestyle business software. Now, the other thing is that we left on this optimized targeting before because that kind of makes sense when you're trying to go for sales. But I, I, I find that the targeting is just way too broad, 66 million people. So what I'm going to do is disable that now. And now we have a more realistic number, which is uh, between one half and one million people, which I, I think is pretty reasonable. So now that I've audited everything and see that it makes sense, I'm going to hit launch campaign.